Hello all YouTubers, I am The Weather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for tuning back into this weather presentation for May 7th, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, I would ask that you please do subscribe if you are not already. It really does help support my channel. And please also, and this applies to every single one of you, please watch the whole video. You, it, you'd be surprised how much it really does help to grow my channel so please consider subscribing and watching the whole video thank you now let's get on with today's video and today we're going to be talking about major cold shots coming in to the united states and the polar vortex is finally coming down into the United States all the way from the Arctic here. And, you know, at least it's happening in May, right? If this thing would happen between December and February, I mean, it'd be talking, I mean, like a major widespread freeze throughout most of the United States. So we're not going to be having that, but it would still get very cold across much of the northern, northeastern, even mid-Atlantic, and even the parts of the south. So we're going to be covering that today in today's video. So here is, this is the current... Uh, this is very current, right? Yes, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. So if we go to 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you can already see one shot. The polar vortex has already started to get there. That jet stream is kind of help digging down. All right, the United States is down here. This is like, this is a northern hemisphere soon. Okay, so this is actually the Arctic right here, in case you guys do not know. And as we head through time, we have to watch it just like the geopotential height, kind of. And it kind of... The polar vortex really digs down into the United States, okay? It's like the geopotential heights around 500 millibars. And, and take a look. This is 2 a.m. Saturday. A real piece of that Arctic air really starts to get into the United States. This isn't necessarily the cold air. Blue doesn't necessarily mean cold, but it does kind of represent the jet stream and kind of our flow here. So, yeah, that's kind of our jet stream really digging down into the southern United States. And, and also, there's also going to be a lot of ridging up here and into the western United States and into uh, parts of western Canada. So that's going to be another part of it as well. All right, and then there it is. And bomb cyclone, that will be part of another video. Please consider checking that one out right here. All right, and that bomb cyclone will be moving throughout the um, northeast and then New England and then moving into parts of like Nova Scotia. But that's kind of like a geopotential heights, geopotential heights, excuse me. This is the Canadian model now. All right, so here it is right here. All right, this is early Saturday morning. And it's really, and that trough is really digging down into the United States. This piece of this polar vortex kind of breaking off. All these blue colors you see are starting to break down. And a piece of that gets right into the United States here. So that's why we're going to be seeing these really cold temperatures. All right, and it's even some record colds now. Thankfully, for those of you who are not a big fan of the cold, it looks like midweek we might have more of a higher pressure and we start to get like a zonal flow of the jet stream. So the jet stream kind of flattens out. It's not like a big dip and a big jump. It's more flat. So we'll see how the jet stream, the jet stream patterns kind of work their way through. All right, this is the two meter temperature, the surface temperature anomalies for the DFS model. Here is Saturday morning here. We're talking about over 20 degrees below average air, especially on the Appalachian Mountains. But widespread, at least 10 degrees below average throughout this whole region here. Upper Midwest, all like northern, central, southern plains, southeast, northeast, Great Lakes, Mid-Atlantic. It's everywhere, <laughs> except for the west. Right, Florida won't be seeing as much cold air getting down. We'll see how far it gets. It will get, though, by Saturday at 8 p.m. That cold air does get into northern and central Florida, even south central Florida, but not southern Florida yet. Now that whole area might hold a little bit, but then but then we have that little tropical disturbance, which will also be another video, okay, depending on when you watch this. Alright. It might not, it might or might not be out yet. That will be coming out on the eighth of May, most likely. And right, depending on when you're watching this video, that'll that'll vary whether you can watch that video afterwards. Alright, but look at this. Once that tropical disturbance passes through on Florida, boom. It was really cold air. And actually, the coldest anomalies will probably be Florida and the Northern Plains by then because of that tropical disturbance moving through. Right. But again, the cold air is going to really persist. And 
even through Wednesday, all right, Wednesday afternoon, GFS model, again, there's your really cold air throughout the center of the United States, the Great Lakes, especially the Southern Great Lakes, Midwest, Northern Plains. But eventually it does start to thin out a little bit. All right, but we could have a little comeback here of cold air, but it will start to thin out as we head potentially middle end of the week for some parts of the Southern Plains. All right, here's the Canadian model now. Again, here comes that cold air, boom. And here it is, Saturday afternoon, we're talking about over 20, 25 degrees below average for the northeastern United States here. So very, very cold air. And, and let's actually take a look at the, the actual temperatures on the Canadian model through Saturday afternoon. Keep in mind, this is 2 p.m. on Saturday. We're going to be in the 20s and 30s across the interior northeast here. So very, very cold air. And that's not even nighttime. Like even nighttime, that's very cold. All right. And actually, the 20s will hold actually into Sunday morning. So you won't have a huge drop, but it can get into the low 20s by Sunday morning. Parts of the Northeast, because those anomalies will start to wear off a little bit. All right, and then, but still, I mean, the South is still, it's cool. I mean, at least we're not in as bad of an anomalies for the South, okay? It's only like a few degrees, whereas the Northern part, it's like, you know, 10, 20, 25 degrees below average. So this is what we'll be watching here, especially over the weekend. going to be at its worst, especially Saturday for much of the Northeast. Here's the NAM model, all right? Again, Northeast, very cold. North Dakota and the Minnesota, also very cold. Even Northern Florida, they put a very, uh, they put an area of pink there. So we're talking about over 16, 20 degrees below average for Florida. And again, let's take a look at those temperatures for Saturday afternoon, all right, for the NAM model. And look how Northern Florida is like barely at 60, and then Southern Florida is like near 90 degrees. That is just insane, all right? But still, the Northeast, all right, Pennsylvania, New York, mid to upper 30s. By 2 p.m. in the afternoon, northern New England, probably between 25 and 30 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, now cold air really does settle in, and according to the NAM model, even down towards the big cities, not getting quite towards the big cities, maybe northeastern Maryland, southeastern PA, uh, northern Delaware, and western Jersey, but close to the coast here, we're going to see temperatures 32 degrees or lower by 2 a.m. Sunday. All right, so this is very cold air here. And definitely something we will have to be watching. Potential snow that will also be included in the um, cyclone video that I did point out. Okay, we were talking about could it, we could have some snow for the northeast. All right. So why is this happening? Well, obviously one of the reasons is the geopotential heights. All right, we know that we're having a piece of the polar vortex break off. And there's your really, where it really connects. All right, so the blue just kind of flows down into the northeastern United States, even breaks off into the north central. All right, so that's one of the reasons. Another reason, oops, another reason is the North Atlantic oscillation. Did you guys ever notice how April was just really cold? Well, well, look at this. Look how the North Atlantic oscillation, or oscillation, however you want to pronounce it, is actually below that zero line. And when that happens, Cold air can actually break off, all right, from the Arctic and actually surge into the United States. And that is really the first time we've had that. Look at February and January, how we were just always above that zero line or maybe right on it at times, but it didn't last very long, all right? We were just above this line the whole time. We we're above, we we're in a positive phase is what they call for North Atlantic oscillation all winter. And that's one of the reasons why that cold air just couldn't get, you know, dragged south. We had some moisture, some moisture. All right, but it just didn't come in snow at all. And in April, all of a sudden, we have a huge drop in the North Atlantic Oscillation going down to two below. All right, so that's deep into a, pot in a negative phase. All right, and it's been, you know, getting a little bit better. And now we're forecasting another drop, all right, right as we head towards mid-May, next couple days, just as this, cold, this polar vortex is coming in. All right, and then we'll see what happens here, okay? Once this hits this kind of trough, it kind of goes down. And once it starts coming back up, it gets uncertain, all right? This is pretty much, it shows this kind of thing every time. The models always fan out like this. It always, it always looks like this. But what we're more certain about, and what's going to be very likely, is that the North Atlantic oscillation will drop as we head through mid-May down below, get into that negative phase, all right? And that's why we might be seeing some cold plunges. All right, temperature anomalies. Six to 10-day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. This is from May 12th to May 16th. 
cold air, northeast, down the mid-Atlantic, north central. Even California, actually, a little bit below average. But take a look here. The 8 to 14 day outlook here. 14th to the 20th. Cold for California, but we start to moderate a little bit. All right, northeast, north central might look be below average still. But we will be starting uh, to, mod to moderate. All right, so that is it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Again, going to get pretty cold, below freezing in some spots, sub-freezing, even just above freezing for others. So take those plants in and plant them towards the end of May. Thank you guys for watching. I am The Weather Dude, signing off. Till next time, thank you for watching.